Amen. Let's take our Bibles this morning. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm looking at a lot of you, and you look like you're sleepy today. <clears throat> and my wife and I were just talking that there just seems to be something in the area. Just sit down and you want to go to sleep. I don't know if it's the climate change right now that we're going through or what, but uh, if you can, stay awake for the next 30 minutes or so. Can you handle that? All right, let's stand together. We're going to read God's Word. If you're not able to stand, that's perfectly okay. We, under, we, we understand that some folks can't. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're going to begin reading in verse number 14, verse number 14 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to end with chapter 3 and verse 3. All right, I still hear a couple of pages turning, about all there. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much this morning for the opportunity to be in your house. I thank you for these faithful folks. Lord, I know there are people here today that worked hard just to get to church. And Father, bless them for them, and, and I pray you'd make their health stronger. We do pray for Sister Jan again today, Lord, that you would touch her body and ease her pain, Father. And if it be your will, that you would heal her. And Father, keep her with us. And then Father, be with uh, her testimony witness. And then, Father, be with other folks. Our dear friend today that's visiting with us, Lord, we ask you to be with him at the loss of his wife. I can't imagine, uh, Father, what it would be like to go through life with your partner gone. Now, Father, bless this sermon now and the preaching of your word. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This morning, I want to talk to you about three classes of people, three classes of people are three different kinds of people that are in the world today. There are basically three. Uh, you might think economically we have rich, middle class, and poor. I know that most of us fall towards the latter there, don't we? And uh, I don't know about this middle class thing. I don't know. In my day, middle class meant that you uh, were doing great and wonderful and everything was hunky-dory, but you didn't have a lot of money. But now I'm not so sure... And I think the numbers have risen pretty high for middle class, so most of us are probably below middle class. And, uh, but we're still here, right? Amen. Amen. And God has taken care of us. Those of us that love the Lord, He takes care of us. You, you also socially have different classes of people. You have really high uh, hoity-toity people. Is that what they used to call them? Their nose is kind of up in the air. And you have folks that are just average day Joes. And then you have folks that are... Um, uh, low-class citizens. I don't know what that's supposed to mean either, but uh, I want to talk to you about spiritual classes of people today. There are three kinds of, of spiritual people in the world, and uh, the first one we want to deal with is the natural man. The natural man, in verse 14, we read, the natural man, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. And so we understand that there is a natural man. What is that natural man? He's a depraved man is what he is. And actually fits all of humankind outside of Christ. 
Today, if you're here and you are not a Christian, you're a natural man. You've only had a natural birth. You've never had a spiritual birth. Um, and you are a man that's, that doesn't even probably, our lady, that does not understand the things of God so much. I told someone recently, there's really no use discussing some of these matters until you get born again. You'll never understand the Bible. A lot of people, oh, I just don't read my Bible because they can't understand it. Well, the Bible says the natural man receiveth not. And so this is a depraved condition. He lives according to the flesh. Why do we have the problems that we have in this world today? It's the natural man. Uh, he doesn't understand things. Uh, how many saw this week that uh, heart-wrenching uh, video of the lady police officer that shot a man. Uh, I think it must have been by accident. I don't know her condition of her mind when she was there. Uh, but the man was sitting on his couch in his room and eating ice cream and smoking something he shouldn't have been smoking. I won't go into that yet. But anyway, so she thought she was on her floor of her apartment, but she was on his floor, not her floor, directly below her. And she walks in the apartment, he's sitting on the couch, and she is a police officer. And I don't know why she shot him, but she shot him. So at the sentencing, the brother to the man that was shot and killed told the lady officer, I forgive you. And she pour, he poured his heart out to this man and says, you need to have a, a, a saved relationship with Christ. You need to be saved and, and you need to get your life together. And I wish the best for you. So he gave an example of a Christian's reaction to what took place. The judge was so moved that he, he, she allowed him to go hug the police officer in the courtroom. And then the judge came from around the desk and hugged the police officer. Imagine a judge who just sentenced you to 10 years, I think it was, in jail. And uh, she comes and hugs us. <coughs> and then she goes to her chambers, comes back out, and takes her own personal Bible. And she says, I have more. And here, here is a Bible for you to have. And I mean, boy, what a moving experience. The world is sitting by, oh, this just ain't right. People don't know what to think of that. Now, I don't know how you feel as a Christian, but really, this is a biblical Christian thing. I tell you what, if we had Christian judges dealing with people, giving them Bibles, maybe we could help stop the crime waves in this nation. But that's the Christian response, and the world just sits there, what in the world is going on? We can't figure this out. It's the natural man. So a natural person doesn't understand spiritual things. Why? Number one, rebellion. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. I can go out here in the corner and I can preach as loud and as long and as hard as I want, and there yet there will be people who will willingly, of their own accord, not receive the gospel of Christ. They will hear someone tell them how Jesus gave his life, how God loves them and says, I don't want you to go to hell, I want you to go to heaven, and Christ died on the cross for your sins, and so you have this opportunity. Well, a lot of people just won't receive it. When we go out knocking on doors, we thank God for this man today that received our people that knocked on his door and talked to him. A lot of people won't receive it. That's the natural man. That's the natural condition of mankind. Um, now, some people would argue that a person... Uh, has no free will. You ever heard of what's called total depravity? That's a, a doctrine that some uh, uh, highfalutin, so-called superintelligent people think that you could never get saved on your own uh, without God causing you to want to accept the gospel. That your mind is so sinful that you could never be saved if Christ didn't make you get saved. That's not the case. Every person has the right. Otherwise, the judgment wouldn't be fair. If it were impossible to receive, receive Christ, then how can you be judged for not receiving Christ? But anyway, so a natural man, he is on his own. He is not welcome. He will not welcome. He will not embrace. He will not improve the things of God. And he automatically rebels against the holy things of God. When we were down here passing out gospel tracts at the local high schools and uh, 
And they were giving us all kinds of hassle at the school district and other places. Even the news media came out and covered part of it and, and was giving us a rough time because we were giving gospel. The natural people don't receive the things of God. So I said this. I said, well, how about this? How about if I just take, and I did this, by the way, and I just roll up the Ten Commandments in a small row and put a ribbon around it and just give those out, just the Ten Commandments. Oh, no, we don't want you doing that either. The natural man rebels, doesn't want to hear it. Now, we don't, we don't get saved by the Ten Commandments, but the Ten Commandments teaches us that we are depraved people, that we are sinners, and we do have a need for Christ. The natural man, that's what taught. So the first class is the natural man. He's in rebellion. Look at his, not only his rebellion, his reasoning. For they are foolishness unto him. Remember the Bible verse that says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish? Look at the movements. Take down the cross off the hill. Take down the crosses in the graveyard. Take down the crosses. They offend us. They think it's foolishness. They think that the, that the gospel message is foolishness. And they, they, I, I, they think creation is foolishness. But the more you study creation and the more you study science, they agree more than science and evolution. It's amazing. I tell you, if you just watch creation, it's amazing to watch animals. I love watching animals. And you see how they are and you study how they are and, and all the migration and everything else. And I saw a funny cartoon this week. It's talking about the birds. What tells a bird to go south for the winter? God has to. How else do they know? I could go into all kinds of things about that. But I saw a cartoon that was talking about that. And uh, one bird said the other bird says, you can always know where to go uh, when we migrate because we just follow the old people headed to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but really, it's God that shows animals these things. It's amazing, isn't it? What tells a, 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 a bear to go hibernate? What would they do if they stayed out during the winter? They'd die. That's a God-given thing so that the bears can survive in Alaska. All right? Their man's reasoning is foolishness. It's foolish. It's absurd to be a Christian. It's crazy to think like you think. Uh, it's absurd for you to say that a woman doesn't have the right over her body, that she can get an abortion. <coughs> this, this thing's really heating up, folks, this debate on the abortion. You know what the next thing is, right? After abortion comes euthanasia. Euthanasia is the killing of adults. It's already legal in some states. I think it's in Oregon where they give you a pill and they say, go home and die. Just take this pill, go home and die. That's not God's method. God says when it's time. We don't say when it's time. God says when it's time. And certainly, uh, ladies, if you, I do agree, you have control of your bodies, but it starts way before you get pregnant. There, there is a way to stop pregnancies. We understand that, don't we? It's not after the baby's already conceived. I'll stop there. But man's reasoning is foolishness. That's the depravity of the natural man. His restraint. It says in the same verse, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, a, a person that is deprived has no spiritual uh, mentality. They cannot understand the things of God. They read them and they are spiritually discerned. They can't understand. Well, it's okay to do what you want. I mean, uh, it's all right. It used to be we would go out door knocking. You hit someone's door and you'd get to talking to them or thing and you'd say, well, is this your wife? Well, no. They'd drop their head. We live together. And they would be embarrassed. Nowadays, oh, we live together. See, man is deprived. He's getting worse and worse. And they don't understand that, that, uh, that, that, that they're not supposed to do certain things. And it's wrong. Um, the, the, the natural man has never been quickened in his spirit. In other words, when you get saved and you give your life to Christ, you are born again. You're born anew. There is a miracle that takes place in your birth. I tell people all the time, explain to me the miracle of 
being born again, when they have problems over how you're saved and you've got to hold on to the end. Of, I says, explain to, the, to me that to me in light of the fact that you have to be born again. We're in the Bible to see, we see a scripture that says you must be born again and again and again. It doesn't say that anywhere. The Bible says ye must be born again. What takes place is when you decide that you're finally going to listen to God and ask Him to forgive you of your sins and you repent from your sins and place your trust in Christ, a miracle takes place and you now have the Spirit of God dwelling inside you and all of a sudden that Spirit says, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is right, that's right. A change takes place. And so that's the problem is they, they, they have restraint because they don't, they don't understand. They don't have that spirit living inside them. But you, if you're a Christian today, you should understand what's right and wrong. There is no excuse for us living like we want to live. We know better. If you're saved today, you know what's right and what's wrong. A preacher shouldn't have to sit up here or stand up here and pound on the pulpit and yell and holler about modesty and all those things, Christians, you should understand it should be automatic. Well, that is what the Bible says. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to dress different, talk different, act different, and do different things and go to different places, right? But the natural man doesn't have that. Now, let's talk now about not the depravity, but let's talk about the dedication of the spiritual man. In verse 15 and 16, we read, but he that is Spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, but he that may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So we see here the spiritual man is that one we were just talking about that has been born again. You have been saved. And because you've been saved, you've been delivered from the deadness of the natural state or the natural man, and you've been transferred Trans, uh, the Bible says, uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have been changed. You are now a spiritual person. And a spiritual man or a spiritual person is one that's been born again. You're a, a person of discernment. Now, let me let you know this morning, I am old school. So when I use the term man here, it refers to ladies and men both. That is correct English. It has been correct English for many, many years. It's today's society that says it doesn't. But, and there's no such thing as an it either. Amen. Either a he or a she, amen. But you become a man of discernment. All of a sudden you can discern or tell the difference between what's right and what's wrong. You uh, uh, that are spiritual judgeth all things. It means to examine things. Discern things. Figure things out. Uh, now, sometimes we have to preach things and preach the scripture in order for the light to go on. Uh, I believe, frankly, that if you don't vote this, this, this year, you're going to have to answer to God for it. In our country, we have the right to vote. They said that we would not have lost Congress to these socialists had Christians voted. Especially if they voted according to the scriptures. Now, I know that these folks, they're not pastors, they're not deacons, they're not missionaries, and they're certainly not spiritual leaders in the homes. Now, some of them may be good leaders, but a lot of them are not. But there are certain things that we need to be discerning about, right? Figure it out. Uh, a natural man can usually reach a proper decision in regards to secular things. Uh, I have listened to natural men, such as some politicians, who figure things out by logic. That's one thing. Logic is one thing, okay? And you can be a natural man and logically come to a good conclusion sometimes. But however, you cannot come to spiritual decisions properly unless you're a spiritual man. We are lacking, as I've said earlier, in our nation because we have a lack of spiritual discernment. People are not spiritually discerning. Um, 
You know, I saw today somebody sent me a clip, a friend of mine that, that is not a spiritual friend. They're just an acquaintance here in this world, I guess is the best way to put it. And, and talking about how they went to church and what a wonderful day time. They had a church activity last night, and they were all country line dancing. And it was a ministry of the church. I remember when churches said dancing is sin. That's all you need to be doing is put your arm around some other woman's waist. Right, gentlemen? That is a lack of discernment. And I have to wonder, are, are these people natural people? Or are they spiritual people? And you think that, that I'm, I'm exaggerating. Listen, there's a church up north in Seattle somewhere. They had beer making classes as a ministry of the church. One church where the pastor swears and cusses while he preaches. I'm telling you, folks, it's, it's unbelievable what we see today is because there's a lack of discernment. It's not spiritual. And they will call us carnal because we say you have to live according to the Word of God and that's all in the flesh and it's all wrong and, and uh, you're judgmental and therefore you're not right. And then they turn around and they just do whatever they want, however they want. They're not discerning. If you're spiritual as a Christian, you will begin to have discernment and figure out, should I do this or should I not do this? We need to have that discernment. You're a, you should be a man of discernment and then a man of distinction. In other words, in verse 15... He, yet he himself is judged of no man. See, the world cannot judge a saved person. They can't judge us. They don't know us. They don't understand us. So they, it's hard for them to make a judgment call towards a spiritual person. If you're a spiritual day, the world does not understand you and cannot judge you. Why? Because we're living the spiritual life. We're doing what God wants us to do. They can't even really criticize you. Is it wrong to uh, not have an abortion? It's wrong to have one, we know spiritually, but the world can't say we're wrong because we don't believe in having an abortion, can they? They don't even understand those positions anymore. I could go right down the list. You name every sin, and we know what we should or shouldn't do. Come on, Christians. We know. And the spiritual man knows that this is what's supposed to happen. And wouldn't it be wonderful to say that, that our Christian life was above judgment of others? That we live that kind of a life? I mean, you think about this. The world was trying to figure out what went on in that courtroom this week. They couldn't figure it out, but they sure couldn't talk bad about it. Not right. a few wicked people outside that were throwing a fit. That's right. But you can't criticize forgiveness. That's not only biblical, it's right, isn't it? How many of you have ever been forgiven? I've been forgiven for things. I've had to ask for forgiveness, amen? Yeah. So when you do the spiritual things, they really can't judge you. So we should strive, of course, to be a man of discernment and a man of distinction and a man of discipline in verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So you and I, as a Christian, we should have the mind of Christ. And that should help give us the victory over the things in our life. We should begin to see uh, self-discipline in our life. A spiritual person is a self-disciplined person. Today, if you're, you're, you are saved and you know you're not natural, but you know you're not spiritual, you understand this, don't you? Because we're not using the power that God has given us to say no to the world and no to sin. But we're supposed to say no to sin. Isn't that what the Bible says? Flee the devil. Abstain from all. Appearances of evil. Not just evil, all appearance of evil. We should be a person of discipline. Of discipline. 
Now, number three, let's talk about the deficiency of the carnal man. This is the third. So we have the natural, the spiritual listed here, and then the carnal. Who is a carnal person? In uh, verses 1 through 3, And brethren, uh, uh, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. So the carnal person then, what is their description? What is a carnal person like? You're saved, you've given your life to Christ, but you're not spiritual, you're carnal. Uh, these are born-again believers. I believe with all my heart they are. I know some folks will say, well, if you're carnal, you lost your salvation. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Uh, matter of fact, they haven't even matured in their faith. They're still babes in Christ. If you're not living a spiritual life, it's as if you're living a baby life. Now, I don't know about you guys. I love babies. And... Uh, and now I'm going to have to wait till my girls all get, my granddaughters all get married off and grandsons so I can have some great-grandchildren now. No more grandkids, just great-grandkids as God allows. But there's something about a baby, and you like a baby, enjoy a baby, but sooner or later you want the baby to get out of diapers. Some of you dear ladies, you've had two or three in diapers at the same time, and you have, always have one that's not quite there yet, you know. We'll do diapers today. I mean, we'll do uh, um, underwear today, and sure enough, mistakes, mistakes, mistakes all day, and you have to go, sometimes you have to even go back and start retraining again and get back with the program. Um, but you understand, and, and you don't want to sit and have to hold them and feed them all the time. The day will come, and they will feed themselves. They grow up, don't they? Well, how come we have Christians that never grow up? We need to grow up, people. Sometimes uh, leadership in the church, y'all, some of y'all agree with me, you understand exactly what I'm saying. It's like you're holding a bottle for some people all the time. They have to be spoon-fed and, and bottle-fed, and they can't endure meat. Um, the big deal in my house with, with my wife and I and my brothers and sisters, we were all here in the church under my dad. We had our kids. My dad had a tradition. He was the one that gave his grandkids their first donut. So the day would always come when they would sit there in their high chair and get their first donut and get to eat it. After that, man, I'm telling you, they, were, they knew exactly what to do. They learned. But listen, it, it gets tiring. We, we should be mature Christians. We should be spiritual Christians. We shouldn't be carnal or fleshly, but we should instead put away the childish things. I'll get to that in a minute. They lacked unity. They lacked unity. For ye are yet carnal. There is among you envying and strife and divisions. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? Now, if you remember, if you've ever read 1 Corinthians from the very first chapter, you see that uh, they were fighting over stupid things, this church, acting like a bunch of babies in the church. I was baptized by Apollos. Well, I was baptized by Timothy, you know, or something. You get in these fights. You'd be amazed where people are. Um, I remember, uh, I, I guess I'm just no fun. I guess I'm just a fuddy-duddy. Uh, I saw where a bunch of people went to the promised land, and they went with the famous name Preacher, so they had that famous name preacher baptize them in the Jordan River so they could say, I was baptized in the Jordan River by Dr. So-and-so. Whoopee. What's wrong with your baptism? I think it, I, personally, I think it makes a mockery of your own baptism. Wasn't my baptism biblical and good enough? Not everybody should be baptized in the Jordan River. And that's just me talking there. I can't say that the Bible says that necessarily, but I do know this. Uh, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. By the local church, amen. Um, so, 
You know, but they get people fight over stuff like that. I told you years ago, I guess, about uh, uh, my church when I was a kid, watching church, having a problem. We had a member in the church that insisted that the indoor of the church be inside of the church be painted bone white. And they were wanting to brighten it up and make it a little bit different, you know, and the members were all behind a different color, but no, this one man, I want it bone white. It's always been bone white, and I want it to stay bone white, you know, and he was just throwing a fit. That's carnal. And so the church said, okay, bone white, we're not going to fight with you, brother. It's not that big a deal. Who's mature there? Who's spiritual? And who's carnal? His last name was Gray, I kid you not. So from then on, they called him Bone White Gray. That was his nickname, Bone White Gray. But you know, I have seen these things, fighting over who got to do what and who's doing this and who's not doing that. And folks, listen, that is not what God says. If we're going to be a spiritual church and a mature church and not a carnal church, then we need to be folks who are willing to cooperate and work together to get the work done for Christ. Now, there are scriptural things that are worth debating. If I got up next week and I read from the NIV, I hope you'd fire me. Or get me down on my knees and make me repent. <laughs> you understand? But man, we don't want to be babies anymore. We don't walk around in diapers. My dad preached some kind of a sermon similar to this. I don't even know what verses he used, but he had uh, put on a oversized, great big, huge diaper. For... <laughs> put it over his clothes, came out in that with a big baby bottle. And I think my sister sang a song about being a baby or something like that. I don't know what we have to do to illustrate, but you get the idea, don't you? We're going to be spiritual, or are we going to be a baby? There was no unity. Uh, so many churches that, that have problems, they have not, nothing to do with eternity. They have nothing to do about winning souls and, and running the, the ministries of the church. And people will often just fight, fight, fight over things. You want to know why pastors often get weary? It's because of the tugging. You got one group tugging you this way and another group tugging you this way and someone else tugging you back this way and pretty soon you say, what's the use? Talk about pastor burnout, huh? It shouldn't be that way. You know, the easiest thing to do is just do what the pastor requests. Just get her done. Get her done. Amen. Get unified. Unified. Here are some things that we see here that are very serious. This particular verse mentions three things that are prevalent in carnal Christians. Envy. Envy. Let's not be people of envy. All right? The other was contentious rivalry. Okay? This is what they had in the heart. They were envious and had contentious envy of what other folks had. Uh, they, were gr they had grudges, carrying grudges and anger towards other believers. These things should not be in our lives. We should be Christians. We know what a Christian is to be like. So we should strive to be spiritual. Now here's the interesting thing about these three types. <clears throat> you can choose to remain to be the natural man. The natural man receiveth not the things of God. That means you're lost. You're on your way to hell. You're not going to go to heaven. You'll never see your loved ones in heaven because you're not saved. You need to get saved. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to repent of your sins. And you don't have to stay that way. But with the spiritual and the carnal or babes, either one like that, those two types of people you can change back and forth from. You can be spiritual today and carnal tomorrow. Honk, honk, honk. Get out of my way, you idiot. You get your license in Cracker Jacks? Okay, that would be pretty carnal. Amen. Hey, woman, what's wrong with you? Talking to your wife. It's easy to get carnal. We've got to watch ourselves. So you can be carnal today and spiritual tomorrow. Everybody's spiritual on Sunday, right? We're our Sunday best. 
But we should all be happy, loving, friendly, forgiving, working with each other all the time. Some of you have seen me get carnal at times. Please forgive me. I like that old button we used to put on our teenagers. Please be patient with me. God is not finished yet. And that's the truth. But we need to, we need to not make excuses and become spiritual. Lay aside all filthiness. Do I need to go there now and go through a whole sermon on that? I think we know, don't we? We know when we're spiritual. We know when we're carnal. We know when we're fleshly, don't we? Most importantly, though, this morning is, are you saved? Have you ever been a spiritual person? Did you know that someone that just got saved could be more spiritual than a person sitting here been saved for 25 years? Let's not be that way, huh? Let's make we're saved, make sure we're saved, we get that squared away, then let's work on staying spiritual. And, and I'm not here just to harp at you because I know there has been a big improvement in West Coast Baptist Church in the last several months. People don't want to go home. They just stay here. That's a, good, that's a good sign. People want to love one another. People caring for one another. Uh, I've been so blessed to hear the testimonies of folks that are doing things and working hard, going out of their way to take care of one another. That's what we need, isn't it? It's what the world needs. Amen. Let's stand together. <clears throat> the head.